join seven second tape delay for Nightline with your host, Gord Marriott. As soon as he came on uh, the television set, it's like the charisma of one Mr. Trudeau when he first began. Billy Graham, when he comes on, I mean, if you don't care the least bit about religion, you listen to the man's voice because it's an interesting voice. John Kennedy was that way for sure. I don't know what he was like as a president uh, because I really didn't think that much of his administration and I happen to know that he made a lot of mistakes. I think the best one of the three would have been Bobby Kennedy. So, you know, like he never got the chance. And Ted Kennedy does not impress me and never has and still doesn't. Uh, he says some things that scare me somewhat. Uh, and, you know, everybody's run down Mr. Carter a fair amount over the, uh, over the hostage taking thing. Mr. Carter's been proven to be very level headed. Some people would equate that with being chicken bleep, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, you know, like he's been accused of being wishy-washy and, and, and like, who do you compare him to? I suppose a lot of people, people still make presidential comparisons with John Kennedy. And it's not fair because not anybody since Kennedy has had that kind of character. And uh, Jimmy Carter doesn't have much, but then what did Richard Nixon have? I mean, what did he have at all? And what did Jerry Ford have? You know, that's a bumbling. There's always Jerry Ford jokes about falling downstairs, losing his luggage, a lot like Joe Clark, right? I mean, that, that image. And so to compare people is rough. And, and the legacy, the comparisons with John Kennedy still go on today because enough people that were 14 or 15 or 20 or 30 then still remember him, even in this country. And they make those comparisons. And another guy like him isn't going to come along in a long time, not to say a better president, but a guy like him with that kind of character and that kind of oratory and the Boston accent and the whole thing. And uh, we're going to go. And thank you very much for uh, participating. And uh, like we uh, always say, uh, this has been Nightline. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, hope you enjoyed the music. Uh, hope you enjoy this next one, too. I'm Gordon Marriott, and do something nice for each other, won't you? This is Frank Sinatra. Have yourself. It's 14 minutes after 10 o'clock. We'll now join seven-second tape delay for Nightline with your host, Gord Marriott. All right, thank you, Daryl Vernon, and thank you, uh, Fred Gorders. My Vancouver Canucks lost again tonight. They're doing almost as badly as your Montreal Canadiens, Fred. Except Fred mentioned to me in this newsroom tonight that... Uh, He's changing his colors to uh, orange and black. Anyway, go Flyers, go. I know. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, everybody. Uh, not too high, though, because check stops out. Know what I mean? Like they're out all over the place. And so if you can do without a little of that stuff, they're pretty polite tonight. They just ask you if you've had a drink or not. And they can tell because they lean right into your car. That's <laughs> how they can tell. And uh, if you are smart you, and you haven't had one, obviously, you say no. And uh, if you've only had one, well, they'll probably pull you over. But I mean, you know, it's not going to be any big deal if you have, you know, but if you're loaded, well, <clears throat> then they're going to get you. Okay? I know where some of them are, too, but I'm not telling. I went through a couple of them on the way here. <laughs> Two, no less. Uh, uh, so, you know, they're, they're out in force. And that's good. Try doing this this year. Try to uh, get through Christmas and enjoy yourself with having a little less of that stuff. See if it works for you. It may not. I mean, some of you may have become so dependent on booze that you can't enjoy yourself without it in any time. You're in trouble. But uh, try doing without it. You know, I mean, the government doesn't make as much money that way, but uh, you save some, right? Use it to buy some, uh, I don't know, a nice present for somebody. Use it to buy a nice present for yourself. You know, but whatever. Tonight, I don't know, there's probably a lot of people out just en masse out there have been going through shopping and are exhausted. Only tomorrow and Monday. Believe the stores are closed on Sunday. Pretty soon they'll be opening them here too. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, only two days left now. So it's time to regroup if you've been out tonight and haven't got finished yet. Regroup and get ready to tear out tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Not 9, 8, so that you can be there by 9 in the lineups. <laughs> uh, music. We uh, have been playing music. We're getting into our Christmas thing here like we do every year. But there are some artists, I suppose, and some tunes that are all oh, in this crass commercialism of Christmas not considered very commercial anymore. And some of the people aren't considered very commercial anymore. And along the way, uh, we wind up missing some of the meaning of Christ Mass, Christmas. 
but Christmas music like this by uh, Mahalia Jackson uh, doesn't let you forget. Okay. That's your uh, basic talent. It's called talent. There's a bit of a lack of it nowadays. <clears throat> uh, singing is anything that uh, you can do to open your mouth and make noise with. That's not noise. That's called singing. Don't hear enough of that. But anyways, I mean, we got lots of other people here, too. Oh, by the way, believe it or not, tonight this is a talk show. You, you probably forgot. You probably thought I forgot. I didn't forget. We can talk about stuff. Sure. Let's talk about good stuff, though. No whining and griping and complaining. Talk about something good that happened to you today, last week, this week. Something that's uh, good that's coming up. Any uh, wishes that you want to uh, pass along to anybody? I don't care. I mean, this is, um, for me, anyway... Well, it is. I guess it'll be the last show before Christmas. I don't believe we got Nightline on Monday night. And uh, at least I don't think there is. And uh, so, you know, like this is uh, an opportunity to uh, sit back and listen to some good music because we are going to play some stuff by some more people. I've got people here like Eddie Fisher, you know, and I got Frank Sinatra, and I got Tennessee Ernie Ford, and I've got Ed Ames, and I've got Mary Lanza. I've got people that you haven't heard from maybe for a long time. And uh, all classics, you know. But you can still phone. 425-1550 in town and 423-4941 out of town. But please, be nice. I, I need it tonight because, well, I figure uh, I've been grumpy the last couple of weeks. I get into the same situation that a lot of other people do. I turn a bit uh, scrooge -ish. Which is to say, not necessarily money, but just... Uh, you can see the people that are out shopping... If they haven't got a smile on their, on their faces, and you're one of them, you're not enjoying yourself. And if you're not enjoying yourself, I mean, this should be, you know, Christmas should be fun and going out and buying presents and stuff. And I suppose maybe all of us leave it too close to the end that we're all out there milling about and it gets tense. It's not fun anymore like it used to be. At least not for me, I don't know. Maybe other people find it fun. But everybody looks, you know, they're grimacing in the face and they're hurrying here and hurrying there. I don't know. Should be a time to relax. But anyways, should we take a break now? And then we'll come back after these, those, those, this, whatever. Capital Cable and Christmas. Hey, you got people in from out of town from, I don't know, Nova Scotia or Denver or Waukegan. I don't know. Someplace. You want to wish them a greeting? They just maybe came into town today or yesterday and probably rented all the cars, which is why I can't get one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's another story that we won't get into. But anyways, I'm going to go to the phone. Talk to Burl. Hi, Burl. Well, just when you said Waukegan brings back old memories, I believe. Is that Jack Benny's hometown? <sighs> that just come off the top of your head? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but I, I always think of... Uh, just a minute now. See, there's Waukegan, there's Sheboygan. There's a lot of strange ones, and I'm trying to think if his was Waukegan or not. Somebody will tell us. I'm sure it, I'm sure it is. I, I think it is, too. Yeah. I, I'd just <laughs> like to wish you a very Merry Christmas, Gord. I just enjoy Friday night tremendously. I like the other fellows, too, but I think you have a certain knack. Well, thank you very much. Also, when you're thinking of playing Christmas songs, yeah. can you find, and I know it's, <laughs> it's not a classic, but it's sure funny, is Charlie Farkinson's Night Before Christmas. As a matter of fact, I might be able to find that if I look real hard. But I've got an awful lot of stuff here, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure yet. I, I, I may do that after 11 o'clock, though. It's a riot. And I, yeah, I got a couple other funny things I like to play after 11 o'clock. Just don't play that blinking Ukrainian Christmas. I know I'm, I'm married to Ukrainian, but that piece... No, I'm not going to play that. In fact, the way I may go with one comedy piece is way over to oh, sweet Norway. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's going to be good. I'm going to sit down and have a lift. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Burl. Thank you all. Bye-bye. CJCA, hi, Glenn. Hi, how are you doing? Not bad. Oh, you sound kind of depressed tonight. I sound depressed tonight? Yeah. No, I'm not depressed tonight. Oh, well, two check stops, uh, bar humbug. <laughs> well, I'm not really bar humbugging that much. I, I, I just fell into it more than I wanted to. I, I just, I let things go too long. And I always say I'm not going to, but I always wind up leaving stuff to the last minute. And that used to be fun, but now it's not. That's all. No. Two check stops? No, they don't bother me. Oh, well, that's good. I, I do some of their commercials. They don't bother me at all. <laughs> I've got to be very careful. It would be very embarrassing to have done their commercials and get stopped. <laughs> just as long as you don't get caught. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. 
I just want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. I uh, Thank you, Glenn. wasn't a regular listener, but uh, mm -hmm. you guys have convinced me. I work at a gas station, so I kind of phone in every once in a while. and just. Are you working right now? Yeah. You are, eh? Well, there's nothing doing here, so I thought I'd hang you guys a dingle and see how things are. And well, good. Merry Christmas. Well, uh, do you get bored when there's nothing going on, or, or would you rather it not be busy? Well, well, I'd rather it be busy with weather like this, but when it's 30 below, I'd rather... You'd rather stay inside. Yeah, I'd yeah. you guys. I hope that 30 below doesn't come back. Well, not for a while, anyway. Well, I hope it doesn't come back at all. I think that, that weather we just had should have been sometime in about the end of January, shouldn't it? Oh, well, something like that, or beginning of February, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that was really strange, and it really got me up tight, too. I let the weather affect me too much. I've, after being here for seven years, it still gets me down a bit. Well, I've been in Western Canada most of my life, and it still gets me down, so... Yeah, but I did, you know, Western Canada, well, Vancouver, it, it snows, but it, it melts quick. Yeah, it doesn't last very long, anyway. Yeah, like it melts the next day. Well, I talked to a well last night from Vancouver, and he said that dirty blow weather really did him in. Yeah, oh, it would. It would. It never gets that cold there. No, no. Mind you, when it gets down to minus 10, uh, e even, e even uh, you know, like like around 15 above uh, in Fahrenheit, uh, that's colder than it than it feels here, actually, because it's such a wet cold. But Well, the secret in Edmonton is long johns. Ah, uh, you know, I... <laughs> I cannot wear those. I mean, I just, there's something about being too confined. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I know what you're saying, but it works. Yeah, I know it works. You know what, I'm one of these people. I race to my car and I race back into the house. And that consists of pretty well all of my exercise. I don't go out for walks or anything when it's cold. Well, it gets you up in the morning anyway. Well, yeah, that that's true. <laughs> Leave the furnace off, that'll get you up. Yeah, it's... Okay, well, I better get going, and okay, I'll, Glenn. once again, I wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I hope I get to talk to you soon. Okay. Okay? Thanks very much, Glenn. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. CJCA, hi, Brian. Yes, good evening, Gord. Go ahead. Now, tonight we're supposed to be positive, so I'm going to be positive. This year, we decided that we were going to get involved with Santa's Anonymous. Yeah. So we went down, we bought a gift, and we donated a gift to Santa's Anonymous. Yes. And we thought, well, tonight we were listening to the radio, and I won't mention what station. <laughs> uh, and the <laughs> announcement came and said, why don't you guys come out and deliver a few gifts? And we thought, you know, that'd be a heck of an idea. Yeah. I've often thought of it, so tonight well, we went. Mm -hmm. We went to five different locations. And you know, Gord, three of those locations lived in, I would say, twice as nice a home as we live in. Oh, yeah. Which shocked me a little bit. Mm -hmm. The other two locations, in my mind, really looked like they needed you mean they might have lived in a nicer house than you did, but not necessarily a nicer home. That's very true. Yeah. That's true. But from the overall physical look of it. Yeah. I was a little shocked. <laughs> yeah, I can see. So what you kind of what you're expecting is a bit of a more slummy kind of area, if I can use that word, or you know, a, a place that you know, like it seemingly on appearance, people couldn't afford to buy things. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that would surprise me too, as a matter of fact. In fact, uh, one home that we delivered to, all around it, were very large homes. In fact, as we walked toward the house, a Lincoln Continental pulled into the driveway next door. Uh-huh. My wife said, Jesus, <laughs> mm -hmm. sure we're at the right house. And I said, well, this is the address. The address. <laughs> and then the next one we went to was a, as it was in a very well-to-do area. Yeah. And uh, this particular home maybe wasn't quite as nice as the homes around it, but the homes around it were probably $130,000 homes. Mm-hmm. Ah, well, but yeah, you know, I'll tell you something. On the outside, it, it may look that way, but... You're talking about a kind of a charity thing here, and it, it reminds me of what I saw. I saw CBS News tonight. I don't know if you did with Cronkite. And they had a thing on there about charities. And it was about the legions and about Salvation Army and about a lot of different charities that are quite reputable. And then there are other ones that aren't so reputable. And they feel that in the United States alone every year, $1.5 billion is pocketed by people that has nothing to do with charity. Oh, I and see. And charity, like you really got to check charities out and you really got to check things out uh, carefully. Uh, it must be hard to police stuff like this. You know, like the, anywhere where anybody can make a living doing something that's almost against the law, like they had a guy on TV tonight that wouldn't come out and admit it, but, but what he was doing was putting on benefit concerts and winding up leaving the people that he was supposedly doing the show for, they'd get 5% of the take and he'd get the other 
95% to pay off people and the rental and all the rest of that stuff and wind up maybe making a 40 or 50% profit. Obviously, it was a benefit to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and these kind of people are allowed to exist. You know, like anybody that can take advantage of something is going to take advantage of something. I'm not suggesting that Santa's Anonymous is like that for a moment. Okay. But, you know, like how do you police stuff like that? I'm Gee, that's kind of a negative note, though, Brian. Yeah, I'm sure there's a percentage of people that, you know, do take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that the thing I enjoyed about Santa's Anonymous is that you know that a gift that you give will be at least going to a child. Yes. The majority of them will be. Mm -hmm. It isn't like giving to a charity and you know that 22 cents of that dollar that you've given yes. uh, will probably make it where it's supposed to be going and the other uh, 78 cents uh, will not. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that, in that respect, it's, it's a very positive very positive. Yes, that's true. In, t in terms of not dealing with money, you're dealing with an actual uh, tangible thing like a, a toy or something, yeah. And I must admit, the one uh, the one parcel we did deliver tonight, there was a little child standing in the background, and he looked uh, just completely enthralled with the whole thing. Yeah. Well, that makes it worth it all, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Okay. Thank you very much for your call. We're, uh, oh, that gets me down. Charities are uh, are something this time of the year, like, you know, like we just said, things can be taken advantage of, and it's, uh, you know, it's a sad case. I mean, here we're dealing with uh, with Christmas, okay, and something that's supposedly in our uh, North American westernized culture dealing with Christianity. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get back to it. How about some Belafonte, Mary's boy child? Hi, CJCA's George Payne for the Work Warehouse, the complete clothing store for the working man at 91st Street and 51st Avenue and Mayfield Road and 163rd Street. I'd like you to join me Saturday at Work Warehouse at 91st Street and 51st Avenue for wonderful buys for the working man. See you Saturday at Work Warehouse, 91st Street and 51st Avenue. Does anybody know is the original Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim on sometime soon before Christmas? Charles Dickens classic. The original. I wonder if it is. Somebody can maybe phone me up and tell me. I'd like to see it again. All I need to do is watch it. I know it off by heart in terms of the dialogue. In other words, like if it was on Christmas Eve, I would uh, listen to Christmas music and watch the television set. I can read lips. I know the script that well. <laughs> Interesting old show. Did you see Winkler the other night? Henry Winkler do the uh, American version, really, an American Christmas Carol, where he was, um, oh, what was his name? Benedict Slade or something like that, I think. And it was, it was the same thing. You know, I mean, it was, it was done that way. Not a bad performance. I don't know if it'll become a classic like a lot of people think it may. It could. Makeup was excellent, you know, to make Henry Winkler look 80 or 75 or whatever he was supposed to be. Crotchety, cranky. But the same, you know, same storyline, just a modern version of it. We should take some more calls, too. Hi, Ed. Go ahead. Yeah, on a positive note there, you champ the phone in about these charities. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, uh, he can think about is, I had the same occasion happen to me a few years ago, delivering hampers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things is this, that uh, some of these uh, homes... Uh, in some cases, the husband has uh, maybe been stricken, and uh, they don't have any, uh, shall I say, he hasn't prepared for it, no fact of insurance or anything like this. Mm -hmm. Other cases, too, is where the family's just been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it might be a nice, fancy house, but uh, yeah, it's not a home life. It's not a family. No family or nothing like yeah. that. Uh, husband's abandoned the wife and children and taken off in his own merry way. And uh, consequently, they really don't have anything other than maybe a roof over their heads. So the positive thing there is at least uh, the kids, you know, even though they're suffering a little bit, they're going to, you know, have some form of a Christmas morning. You know, you've done your part in it, and uh, there's been many, many people that's worked to see that uh, people that are in need of it are getting it, mm -hmm. and they've tried to do their utmost best in it, and uh, that's all we can say, we've done our best. Yeah. And leave it go at that. Mm -hmm. uh, my own experience was living in the hampers is uh, I happened to hit a home where uh, I knew the, the husband of the family mm -hmm. and uh, I expect to find uh, poverty in that. It's not that case. And then, it's like I say, and the other thing, too, is we're all of a sudden an unfortunate incident besets the family, such as uh, maybe a uh, husband goes out with a heart attack or mm -hmm. some form of affliction or an accident. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And, uh, and there's many cases, too, where they're very well-to-do people, and uh, they provide in that, but uh, the length of time or the length of illnesses, and pretty soon it's eaten up whatever savings or income that they may have had or yes. think So mm -hmm. I think that we just look at it this way, and we say, hey, we've given it our best shot, so we've contributed a little bit. So, yeah. We've got that feeling that we know we've done our part, and that makes, makes Christmas a little bit better. Try not to be cynical. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's pretty tough, you know, and I can, I can really sympathize with the guy. I know for many years I was very cynical after delivering these hampers, mm -hmm. uh, and I just wouldn't contribute it to charities and uh, at all for many years. And now I, I'm back at it, so I got thinking. I thought there's still a few that you're getting to, you know, that, that really do need it. Thanks very much, Ed. You're welcome. Okay, have a good night, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, Robin. Hi. Go ahead. I'm a hi to Washington and CJCA. Merry Christmas. All right. Thank you very much, Robin. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good Christmas. That is a very unusual song. Doesn't matter who does it either. It's still an unusual song. It's always kind of uh, it's captured my imagination a bit. Very different from past traditional Christmas uh, hymns, music, whatever. Uh, I'm going to hit this here button and I'm going to talk on the phone to Alex. Hi, Gord. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Not bad. Yeah, I'd like to know your point of view on the election. Point of view on the election? Yeah, please. You mean this one coming, the one coming up in uh, February? February the 18th on my mom's birthday? Boy, she's happy about that. Nobody's happy about that. Who wants an election on the 18th of February? Pardon. I'm annoyed about that to start with. I think the uh, conservatives will win. Do you? Yes. How do you feel about the NDP at Broadbent? I think they'll pick up more seats. Do you think they'll beat out Trudeau or come close? To become the official opposition? Yes. No. You don't think so, eh? No, they can't get enough seats. But they'll get they'll get quite a few more seats, I think. I think they... What have they got right now? What did they have? 30-something? Yes, that's right. Uh, I think they could get close to 45 or 50 seats next time. I think your estimation is pretty correct, yeah. Yeah. But I, I can't see them forming a government for a long time. Uh, Mr. Broadbent impresses me. His politics don't impress me, but as a speaker and as a man, he impresses me. Yeah, I think if he was with another party, he might go a long ways. You're right. He's a darn good talker, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'd like to wish you a good Christmas and everybody to see JCA staff. Mm hmm And a happy new year. All right, Alex. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. This song is called Away in a Manger, and Away in a Manger is a classic song in itself, but this guy doing it is a classic because he's a classic. It's Mario Lanza. All right, and we are back with about five minutes before news time. I'm going to take another call. Hello, Wally. Hi, Gord. How are you this evening? Pretty good. Could you speak up just a bit? Very Merry Christmas from the rest of the staff at CJC also. Thank you. And also, I'd like to extend a Merry Christmas to all the fine people out in St. Paul, especially to my father and mother-in-law, Andrew and Helen Tkachuk. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to let them know our mom and dad uh, batten down the hatches because half the crew is going to be out there about 3 in the afternoon, and you know what happens then. <laughs> 3 in the afternoon when? Tomorrow? That's correct. Is that right? Oh, yeah. You bet. All the boxes and everything are all loaded. <laughs> yeah? My brother-in-law thinks he's the manager of the co-op bakery down there, but we just let him believe that. Well, he uh, has a birthday today, and uh, he probably had his finger in the donuts again, too. <laughs> Your little political beliefs, uh, I kind of disagree on you, or with you, but uh, we won't go into that. Uh, I always thought that if you don't make it as a talk show host, and you've got a darn good record so far, you could always give uh, Jim Crochet a good run. Oh, gee, thanks very much. That was fun doing that. Oh, it wasn't. Even though I did bet on the Alouettes. I think everybody had a good time. Uh, <laughs> which uh, thing was available to the public, though? Well, it was just really something that was uh, thrown together down here with just one guitar. Barry Hawkins played the guitar on it, and, and Peggy Miller wrote it from uh, City Hall, wrote the words for it uh, quite cleverly, too. You know, it's just something that was, I mean, if you were going to do a record production, you'd do it a lot better than that was done. But it was okay. Oh, yeah. It was okay. I think it was really super just from the time involved and everything like that. Okay, you have a good night. You betcha. Okay, bye-bye. Bye -bye. Tennessee Ernie Ford uh, is a classic singer for hymns, religious songs, always has been. <laughs> Joanne, will you go away? Neil Edwards, don't leave chocolates on your desk. Neil Edwards from K97. Joanne is stealing the, the chocolates off your desk, and she's offering them to me, me, who has all the willpower of a river going downhill. You know, like, I mean, I just can't turn around and go back. Now, I don't love chocolates, but I mean, if somebody keeps twisting my arm long enough, I'm going to have a chocolate, right? But I didn't. I'm so proud of myself, huh? 
Well, what I've done, I've, I've lost a little bit of weight lately because I want to have something to play with, you see, for the next couple of weeks because I know I'm going to gain it back. Goaters, you haven't done that. You haven't lost anything. All you're going to do is get heavier, right? Huh? <laughs> He's grinning. <laughs> uh -huh. He'll have to buy a new girdle, Fred. Okay, uh, he missed that. Uh, we, we've been uh, playing some uh, nice Christmas music, and we go from that uh, to another aspect of Christmas that un unfortunately has uh, its worst side. It, it's kind of ridiculous, as a matter of fact, and here it is. I don't, I don't know why, but we're going we're gonna to play it. Here, here it is. Why did we do this? I mean, it was going along quite nicely, actually. Oh, we got to have a little levity, right? What is his name? Yo, yo, I can't even say it. Yogi, Yogi Yogans. Yo, you can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> this was hilarious. Yogi Jorgensen. Yogi Jorgensen. Yogi Jorgensen. Yes. Hitter, bitter, 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 bitter. Okay. Uh, probably related to the uh, chef on the, with the Muppets. Uh, anyways, that's <laughs> an excellent piece of uh, whatever that was. Uh, we're gonna take a break and come back. All right, we're back. And uh, that was Nat King Cole. Um, we're going to call here. We might as well take another call then. Hello, Mike. I'm just calling to say that I uh, I just saw Pierre Trudeau on uh, television. Yeah? And he's wearing his rose in the lapel, and he looks like a winner. Yeah? What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the fact that he's wearing his rose and the fact that he's going to make a comeback, M Mr. Trudeau's retiring reminded me a lot of Mr. Muhammad Ali retiring. In other words, I didn't buy it. I didn't believe it to start with, particularly, and I didn't think it would take too much once... I mean, it, it was pretty obvious that if he was going to bring the government down and they didn't have a leader, that they were going to ask him back, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, and I think it was uh, one of the shortest retirements in history, a lot like Muhammad did. Man is a showman. The man is effective. Yes, I think he is a winner. I'm not sure if he's going to win another election, though, because I think too many people are tired of him, and I don't think if he was trying to accomplish alienating Mr. Clark over the last six months, I don't think he did a good enough job of it. And I don't think Mr. Clark, while he did uh, do a lot of uh, maybe some things that made him look like a buffoon, uh, didn't quite alienate himself enough and Mr. Trudeau didn't help along enough. The Petrocan thing, I, I think it's silly. I think the mortgage uh, deductibility thing by the conservatives was silly. I think a lot of their legislation and proposed things was silly. But I think Mr. Trudeau and the Liberal Party have proven that they're tired. Well, okay. that's, that's very true. But I understand that Margaret called him the other night when he decided to run a game. Did you hear about this? No. May, may I tell you? Well, if it's clean, sure. <laughs> Margaret called and she said, uh, Pierre, she said, I'm very sorry that you have decided to run a game. I thought we could get together and have a reconciliation when you retired. And he said, well, that's very nice. Thanks for calling, Margaret. But let me assure you, at no time do my plan have you in them. I think that's all dead and gone. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be prime minister again, and uh, my plans don't include you. And so she said, well, that's, that's too bad. I'm sorry. But she said, you know, there's a lot of other fish in the ocean. Tonight I'm at Studio 54, and I'm dancing with the next president of the United States. <laughs> See